All right. Hello, everybody. This is AJ Yeager with the Data Rich Show and Mr. Billy, Billy, Billy. Back for a second time. We are here talking about data, but more importantly, we're going to get to the title of the show later. Billy, how are you doing? Doing great. Happy to be back for part two. This time you have a little more of a, a full beard, by the way. Well, it's winter now. You know, <laughs> I, I, gotta, I need some insulation. Insulation. That's another way to, I like that. That's good. Yeah, um, do, I don't know if the last time I had a big beard or not. Did I have the big beard? I don't think you had the big beard last time. Yeah, you're insulating yourself too. I am. You have good, uh, good survival instincts, AJ. Yeah, I had the, the Norway down. When I was in Norway, I had it down to here, which was totally different. But it is a lot oh, of Oh, man, I guess you can hear that one. Yeah, I have a lot of pictures. But anyway, it's good to see you. I'm super excited about uh, talking with you today again. And again, like always, we're just conversating about data. We're just a bunch of nerds talking about data, talking about growth, how to, how, to, how to expand our business. And really, this, this episode is coming from out of really necessity because on both of our sides, right, people have been talking about, you know, they're not able to answer the business questions they're trying to, to that they're asking. They're not able to, you know, track the, the, the things that are going to bring the results in their business, or they just don't know what they don't know when it comes to data and tracking, but they're trying to right. grow their business online. So really, is there a better way to put it then? I mean, we're going to talk about tracking and why that's so important in your online business and in, in any business really, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's a big thing that, so when, uh, when we kicked off the year, my assistant and I, we put together our, our marketing plan for this year. And that was a huge part of it was being data driven and really doing things by the numbers and making sure that we take emotion out of it. Because especially yeah. for, especially for, you know, we work with a lot of solopreneurs or small teams, startups, entrepreneurs, people who are trying to get things off the ground and, you know, versus a, a huge company. So, and, and often the business has a, a huge impact on that person's lifestyle. So it's very easy when, when you're in the valley, you know, and things aren't going so well to make very emotional decisions. And those tend to be the wrong decisions. So I love to just take emotion out of it and just go by the numbers because that's really how I sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. And at Praxis, we, we have a saying like data always tells a story. Yeah. It sometimes tells a story that you don't want to hear. And that's, that is the truth of it. Uh, our number one value is transparency and that data is going to tell that story all along the way. But unfortunately, some people just stop when it gets hard or stop when the details really get important. And then they kind of like, oh, well, yeah, that's good enough. And then they let go of it. Uh, whereas every single step needs to be thought out and tracked. So we're going to help shine some light on why tracking is so important. We're going to talk about some best practices. We're going to talk about UTM codes. And if you don't even know what that means, we'll We'll get to what the definition of that is. The importance of tagging, the importance of SOPs, standard operating procedures. It's not always a, a track, uh, an application or a platform or a technology stack that's going to fix your problem. Sometimes it's you or sometimes it's your team and the way you're doing things that can, can, can be the death of a company or can be a massive explosion from 15 sales a day to 350 sales a day. So that's, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. And, um, and then I've got a, a really cool, a couple of slides to, to show to kind of give us some visual aids. So let's All start right. off with, I'm just curious, how do you handle tracking or how did you handle tracking in your business before? So the way I think about it is that you really have, you have lead indicators and lag indicators. Mm. You got, you guys talk about that at all, or have you done any presentations on that? Nope, we have not. Okay, cool. So your audience hasn't really heard this before. Yeah, this would be good. Okay. Yeah. So that's really how I think about things. Uh, so this started when I first learned about these, when I was working with a guy named Matt Frazier over at no meat athlete, if you know that site, yep. The, uh, yep, I do. for plant-based fitness, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so this was early on when I was doing online marketing consulting, I was running my own business. I was selling home beer brewing courses online. So I was in the corporate world for a while, started a beer blog and that turned into a business. And then uh, I really became passionate about online marketing and combining the creative side, the copywriting side, which I always enjoyed, with the data side, which is what I really had a lot of experience in from my corporate consulting world. So I was, um, so I was helping out Matt. He brought me on for some consulting, but I, I was still somewhat new and we were really learning together. And so we're just reading a whole bunch of stuff. And he read this book, I think it's called The, the 4DX Method. Mm. And, uh, and it talks about lead versus lag indicators. 
So what that is, is that a lead indicator is what drives a lag indicator. So let's use the example of a salesperson. So the salesperson, for them, a lag indicator is the revenue, how many, or how many sales they make. But they don't have direct control over that. They can't just turn a knob and start making more revenue, right? It'd be nice if they right. could. Well, what they do have control over is how many sales calls they make that day. Right. Or you know, if they're doing direct outreach, how many people they reach out to. And so it can feel like, it can be very stressful and you can feel like you're not in control sometimes of, of those numbers, especially if they're not looking too good. If uh, the number of your leads generated aren't looking too good, if your revenue's not looking too good. So I say control what you can control. And those lead indicators are a big thing that you have control over. So what are the things that drive the results in your business? And I think it's just as important to track those lead indicators as the lag indicators. So going back to what I was saying earlier about my business and working with my team and how we're tracking things, we actually track on a weekly basis. We have a, a meeting every Monday and we have a spreadsheet where we have those lead and lag indicators. And for me, the lead indicators are things like, content produced. That's a really, really big one. So how many, how many emails did I write? How many articles, how many Facebook lives, things like that. Cause the philosophy I follow is content marketing. So that's right. what moves the needle. And then the lag indicators are things like website visitors or email opt-ins and of course revenue. Right. Um, so that's really where I start with things. So I'll pause there for you. No, that is, that's really awesome. It's a very simple way of thinking about it. There's a line in the sand, right? Control. I like what you said about, you know, what you can control. So I'm, I'm really curious about when you're doing the content tracking in your spreadsheet, um, how granular are you getting? How, how does that spreadsheet look like? You don't have to necessarily show us, but like, what are, what are some of the examples of what you're tracking when we're doing that? So what I do is I set a goal for how much content I want to produce. Right. So if I want to send, say, uh, three emails a week, that's really all that I track, just the fact that I'm doing the work. Yep. So it's really a form of, it's, it's quantifying uh, accountability, right? Mm -hmm. It's a form of accountability. And so we know, so often you might look at revenue or, uh, or a number of leads, and it's not where you want it to be, and you ask yourself, well, why is that? And, and that's something that you help people a lot with by digging into the data. Right. But uh, something that people often don't look at is those actions and what's actually driving revenue. And look, if you're not doing those things, if you're the salesperson not making any calls, then yeah, of course you're not going to have any revenue. So, right. uh, so, the up, so the other side of that, so then you have, so you're doing those things. And then, of course, stuff moves, right? So you're producing content, you get it out there, and that sets things in motion. So for us, we're using uh, Facebook ads a lot to promote our content. So we get the content out there and that's when stuff starts to happen. And that's really where you need to have your tracking in place. And that's of course what you guys do such a good job in helping people with. Yeah. It's, it's like cause and effect. You're going to do these things and you're going to hold yourself accountable by tracking. I actually did what I said I was going to go do and, or, Hey, I wanted to get 20, I wanted to get 20 touch points out this, uh, this month. I'm only at five. Well, no wonder the results aren't coming in because you didn't do those things. So I love that, that it's about self. It's about the person or the team tracking. Did I do what I said I was going to do at a, at a, at a baseline? Yeah. Then there's, like you said, once you do that thing, then the floodgates open up. Then there's all this automated data, which is a beautiful thing. We live in an amazing time where everything is tracking data, right? All the time, whether it's tracking the right data, we're going to get into that. Um, and whether it's set up right, we're going to get into that, but that is a, a, a kind of a great way to lay the foundation. Thank you for that. That's really cool. Um, no so, and then some of the problems that we hear people talk about, we've been on a number of podcasts and speaking live here really recently in the this quarter one of 2019 and everything comes back to that. Your output is only as good as your input, right? Yeah. So what I mean by that is when people come to us and say, hey, we really want a dashboard to track lifetime value of a customer, then we have to say, great, well, we've done that before. That's no problem. That is the amazing metric that you need to have, especially as a young company, your retention, subscription data, all of that. Wonderful. So let's talk about what you're tracking right now. What are the technologies you're using? And most of those are going to automatically track it. But a big challenge that we hit is people say, oh, well, I, I'm not using UTM codes or I'm not using, you know, tracking links or anything. I just have Google Analytics installed. I have my Infusionsoft or my Teachable or my whatever doing the rest of it. And it's all separate and disparate. 
disparate meaning just none of it really talks to each other besides a few zap ears so so let's talk about how confusing that you know that cause can be once or the effect can be once you start things in motion right. so where do you think would be a good place to start acquisition right like client acquisition facebook ads anything you're doing on the front yeah. end. You agree I, I would even go a step before acquisition. So uh, the approach that we take to doing Facebook ads, and I think Facebook ads are a great uh, lens to look at this through. Sure. Because the, the way that we do it, we really map our ads to the buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. So the three stages of the buyer's journey, you have the awareness stage, the consideration stage, and the decision stage. Right. And so I think a big mistake that people make when looking at their data is that they're, let's, let's use the example of an ad is that they're, they're trying to ask too much of their ad. They don't know what the goal of the ad is. And you have to know what the goal is to know which numbers to look at. Yep. So if we're running ads just to make people aware of us, we're not really relying on that ad to make a sale. That's just like, it's really asking too much of it. So if we're running an awareness ad, and it might just be a, a two minute video, that's something pretty common that we do. It might be something like, I don't know, five biggest mistakes in data tracking. Yep. Okay, so what is the number that we're gonna look at for that? And there's usually a handful of things, but you're probably gonna look at your video views. Yep. How much did we pay to get someone to watch 100% of our video? That's a really important number, right? If you're talking about a lead gen ad, then you wanna look at your cost per lead. And then of course, if you're looking at a, if you're retargeting back to a sales page, you look at ROI, that kind of a thing. So I think it's really important to know what the goal is of the content you're putting out there and then map that back to the appropriate metric. 100%. I love that. Um, that's exactly what we do. The word map is very important because you got to think, you got to start with the, be, the end in mind and then, and then really track that through. Now, we have a, a process that we call metrics mapping. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Let me know sure. when you can see it. Let's see. That should be there. Whoop, share. Can you see it now? Uh, nope. I'm, oh, yeah, there we go. Road All right. Three. Cool. The road up and data mastery. I'm going to come back to that one, but like this is a lot of times how things look, right? <laughs> You've got your mm -hmm. front end. This is kind of like your funnel or where should I spending money or my ads working, but you got yeah, SEO, SMM, PPC. It's, it's being tracked over here. You got your click throughs, your bounces, your readers, leads, prospects, sales, loyalty, customer advocates, and your tracking probably looks like this and it may be even worse than that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We want to, we want to simplify this. So what I want to take, take everybody back to is mapping this out. Oh, bear with me. I scrolled way too far down. Here we go. Metrics mapping. So starting from the top down, this is, this is our process that to just piggyback on what you were talking about, no matter whether it's a, a, an ad or your marketing strategy or whatever, we start with a highest level goal. What are you trying to accomplish right now? What is that business goal or goals you're trying to accomplish? Then what is the, what are the business questions that you need to answer? What are the business questions you're asking to, to achieve that goal, right? So what are our conversions on our site? How do we increase conversions on our website? How do we increase qualified traffic to our site? How do we, you know, how, how do we, um, uh, what, how, how are the ads doing? You know, how do we increase our, or lower our uh, cost per acquisition? Then out of those business questions, we're going to identify those key metrics or KPIs that are going to help answer that business question. So at a high level, we're getting very clear. Now you can do this as a, for a whole business or a specific campaign like you're talking about, right? It's mapping those goals okay. to the actual KPIs. And you just listed about three or four of those, but there's a whole bunch more they can do uh, if they're, they're looking for sales or they're for looking for opt-ins. But then after that, we take it about four steps further, which is where does that data live? Is it, and we're just talking about uh, Facebook ads right now, but what about when they're clicking off the, the ad and they're actually going to your website? Um, yeah. Or they're going, and maybe they're just going to ClickFunnels. Maybe it's going onto a form that's going to go right into Infusionsoft. Th at that point, when they click and they leave that ad, that's where the wild, wild west happens. That's where we've got to have that tracking. We'll get to UTMs later, but now it's going to say, where, we're asking, where is that technology living? Next, we've got to validate that data. We've got to understand, is the tracking, was the tracking set up right? Is the tracking um, actually passing through the right way that it should to your bank account, right? Because there's, there's merchant, pro where there's, the, there's the, the shopping cart, then there's the merchant processor, then there's merchant processor to your bank. There's a lot of things that can happen with that data until it actually hits your numbers. And then there's QuickBooks that 
that, or, you know, whatever financial software you have that brings that in as well. And sometimes that can be off. So mm -hmm. there's, it's all working against everybody. It sounds terrible, but it's part of the process, but it's, there's good news at the end of the tunnel here. It is messy. It is messy, but that's why we've got to, that's, that's why we harp so much on taking a few steps back and making sure that you validate and you chat, track and test this stuff all the way through in the beginning, before you start driving a lot of traffic, before you start spending a lot of money, before you start saying, I don't know what's going on and start guessing. Yeah. After that, we've got applying formulas and filters. How do you want to see the data daily, weekly, monthly? You know, how do you want to be seeing all of your tracking? Like when you're spending ads, Billy, how, how often do you look at your, your dashboards and, and Facebook when you're spending money? <laughs> well, um, most people uh, check it every time they take a sip of coffee. Right. <laughs> 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 refresh, yeah. refresh, refresh, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, Daily, weekly. I mean, it, uh, depends. at least weekly. Yeah. 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 At least weekly. So we, we, we apply those formulas and filters. We're talking about this ahead of time before you even start these campaigns. And last but not least, how do you want to visualize the data? So you talked about tracking and getting very specific with the goal in mind for that ad. And I just wanted to bring it out and expand it to, you know, the whole business and what you're really trying to accomplish. So hopefully that was helpful um, from top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Cool. And then one of my other slides, since I'm sharing my screen right now, on a high level, again, we want to talk about what's called the roadmap, roadmap to data mastery. So this is how we see the journey of data and the journey of the companies that we help scale. Uh, and, and, and please understand that the, the number of revenue here is really does not matter. It's just, is kind of like a, a general rule and spectrum. We have companies that have come to us doing 50 million, 100 million, and they're actually over here in data infancy. They're, they're succeeding despite them, in spite themselves. They're not data driven. They've got stuff that's a mess, but they're still making money. So the question lies, what would they be able to be doing right now if they had their data in order, if they just had a fraction of their data? So no matter where you are, it's not a good or bad, but data infancy, all the way up data foundation, optimization, maturity, and mastery is this journey we want to take people on. Now, if you notice down here, we're talking about manual reporting single source visualizations, no defined KPIs, the tracking, not using UTMs. Uh, Google's like uh, Google Analytics is, the script is on the pages, but it's not really set up for conversions. No yeah. event tracking, no, no Facebook pixels set up, like no data dictionary, no SOPs in place. This is the very beginning starting place. So we wanna, this is that journey. This is what, why we're having this conversation is to help people kind of get the education and the mindset to say, hey, there's light at the end of the tunnel here, Everybody's got to go through these stages. This is exactly what you've got to do. Yeah, and going back to your point about people who are doing a lot of money despite being in the data infancy stage, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them out there because you don't really need this to make a whole lot of money, but if you want to scale, you do need this. Because I mean, just knowing from my copywriting background, the, the most important thing is the offer. So if you come up with a really good offer and put it out there, you don't have to have analytics set up or anything like that. You can do really well and make a whole lot of money if you have a killer offer, but you're doing it despite not having those things in place. So for those types of companies, that's really where the huge opportunity is, is that you did the hardest part. I mean, everyone, you know, if we could all just make offers that sell like that, then that's all we'd be doing, right? Yeah. But, um, but if you can do that and then go back in and then look at the data and, and see what's happening and follow the steps that you gave on the previous slide, that's really how you get to the next level because the, uh, the offer alone is, is really not enough when it comes to scaling. And, and nowadays, because everything is, is going digital now, I mean, uh, there's so many tools out there that can help you with this that it doesn't need to be so hard. You know, this, like, this is kind of tricky to set up. I mean, you definitely make it easier for people. But uh, growing your business doesn't have to be a, always a guessing game. There are a lot of questions that you can simply answer by looking at the data. Exactly. And you don't have to be, we talked about this last, last time, like you don't have to be a mathematician or a to complete data nerd or a data scientist to figure this stuff out. It really comes down to asking those right business questions and then getting into the data. But some people are scared of Google Analytics, right? Some people are scared of like the numbers and then they don't know if they can trust it or not. So how about we kind of jump into like maybe some best practices? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Cool. Um, so where should we start? I mean, there's so many different places to start. We didn't really think this one through, but UTMs is probably a, a really good place to start. <laughs> what is, what are UTMs then? 
Yeah, let's start with the uh, conversions and then back our way into that. So, cool. so what you're really trying to do here, so you have these key numbers in your business and, and conversions, that, that, that can mean there are a lot of different types of conversions. So it can be a conversion to a webinar, it can be a conversion to a, a lead magnet, a lot of our clients use those, conversion to a sale. Essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out with all this tracking stuff, where are those conversions coming from? And so what you want to do with Google Analytics is begin with the end in mind. It's not just something, you don't just look at it for fun, you know, maybe nerds like us do, <laughs> but you want to use it as a, a tool to give you information to help grow your business. Yep. So, so that's what you want to do with your Google Analytics is first you want to get the, the setup correct and we can talk a little bit about that and best practices, but the, the mindset you want to have is, okay, how can I use this to increase conversions? And the way that you do that is really by setting up goals. And I'm amazed by how many people have Google Analytics set up, but they're not using goal tracking. And goal tracking is really just a way to look at those conversions. And then if you do your, your tracking correctly using UTMs, which we'll talk about in a sec, you can feed more data into Google Analytics to give you a more accurate and a more uh, detailed and just a richer view of what's driving those conversions and where the best conversions coming from. Yep. That's a perfect basic uh, right up here on the screen while you're talking. I threw this up very, very simple steps, right? Google analytics, set up your Google analytics account. If you haven't already, make sure you you've got all the code on all the pages. But what we recommend is using Google tag manager to simplify this process, because if you are using Facebook uh, ads or if you're using any other ad advertising, you're going to have all these scripts that you have to place for each one of them on your page. What yeah. that does is that overloads your web pages, makes them um, make, uh, allows room for error, makes them slower. You don't want to have all this extra code on there. So Google Tag Manager is a free tool, just like Google Analytics, and it is like a, a capsule that allows you to put multiple different companies. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook, Google, Facebook. They play well together with this thing. It's like the holder, the container for all these different scripts that you can put on your, your website. You just go to create another account for that, share it with your team or your coder, or if you're the person in there, you just load Google Analytics in there, Facebook pixels, Yahoo pixels, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just the container, and that's the, the best way that we recommend people uh, set this up on the website is using Google Tag Manager. And then finally, uh, putting in the Facebook pixel, right? We're just talking about Facebook pixel, uh, loading that in there. But then, that's all the basics. We really believe in getting a professional, someone, someone from our company, someone you can find on Upwork that's trusted, somebody who knows what they're doing when they can go through and set up those events, set up those goals, and set up conversion tracking the right way and test it. That's going to be the difference between big money and, and lost money, really. Exactly, yeah. And a lot of people think, too, that once you install the Pixel, the work is done. No, you really do need to customize these things. And that's why, and you really should use an expert for this or, or follow a tutorial. But uh, I do things like set up filters because mm -hmm. I want to make it easier to read too. So one of the things, one of the filters, my, my go-to filters I always set up is uh, the one that shows you the full domain name. So out of the box, Google Analytics, it only shows you, so if you're going to, say you're going to my website, linchpin.media slash about, my about page. It's one of those fancy URLs that has .media.com instead of .com. But if you go to linchpin.media slash about, then uh, if you go into Google Analytics, oh, it's L-I-N. L-I-N. Yeah, L-I-N. Yeah, there you go. Dot media slash Flush about. Out. Yep. So if I go here and then I check this in, um, actually I told you to use HTTPS, no biggie. So if I, um, I also need to work on this page. <laughs> if I go to Google Analytics and check this out, it's going to just have the slash about. It's not gonna have the rest of the stuff on there. And so, so a lot of people, especially online marketers, they use a lot of subdomains. Mm -hmm. So things like lead pages and click funnels and things like that. And it can be very confusing to figure out which subdomain that they're on. So what I like to do with the filters in Google Analytics is add a filter that shows me the whole domain name. Right. And so, and so that will show me the, the subdomain too. And it just makes it easier to read. And so that's, that's one of the configurations that you can do to get more out of your Google Analytics. Yeah, and that's, in, that's inside of Google Analytics. That's if you're gonna spend the time there and you're not ready to, to put stuff into a dashboard yet, that's making it easy. And you can do saved reports, right? You can do custom reports in there so that you're not just clicking around and seeing all this confusion. It's about making it simple for you to digest. 
Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. And maybe, uh, I don't know if you can maybe put in the comments, a screenshot with your stuff, like, you know, uh, marked out or anonymized, but the, that would be kind of cool to see. Yeah. Could you, could you share that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can show a screenshot of how to set up the filters. That'd be cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. love that picture. I mean, that's, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to click on the button just because of that, that look right there. Puppy dog face. That's why I started sweating, right? Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Love it. Okay. It's so, blue steel. so then that's, that's your blue steel. That's blue steel. I feel like it's more teddy bear like, but oh, it looks you. good. It looks good. Um, let's go with, uh, so the UTMs now, since we've kind of laid the foundation with Google analytics, um, yeah. UTM stands for urchin tracking mechanism, right? It yeah. was, it was like bought, I don't know, was this 10 or 15 years ago now? Maybe more than that um, by, by Google. It might be longer than that. Don't quote me on the, <laughs> on the time, but UTMs are passing through specific, specific information, um, to help you attribute where things are coming from. Uh, we make sure that when we're having we're working with our clients and consulting with them, we're, we're asking them to, Hey, the more sp specific you are, the more that you use these specific links that me that have meaning in them with every email, blog post, advertising, whatever, uh, it's going to carry that information through the journey of that customer and help us attribute where that came from. Because people don't just buy through a, 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 a as much as we want to build these amazing funnels, that doesn't always happen all the way. They'll come in through the opt-in page, an opt-in, and then it's gone. And then, or they, they leave that page and then they may see a retarget and come back on Facebook, but then see something on Instagram, get inspired, see a blog post and then buy. Right. Right. It's jumping around the, the people's attention spans, all the advertisements going on. You can build a perfect funnel. They're not all necessarily going to go through it that way. So that's why yeah, it's funny. I was just talking to someone about that the other day with, uh, with Facebook ads. Because so many people buy the, or create these very linear sales funnels where they just right. date and these ads together. Then they're like, yeah. all right, they're going to watch video one. And then everyone who watches that is going to, of course, watch video two. And they're going to go to video three. And then the landing page, and they're going to buy. And it's like, you don't buy like that in the real world. Your customers don't buy like that in the real world. <laughs> in the real world, it's, it's messy. And it's an ecosystem. And so, you know, you can't control that path. You can, you can certainly guide it. And that's what marketing is, I believe, is guiding people down that buyer's journey that you showed earlier from top of the funnel to bottom. Yeah. Um, but the, the data is going to come from following these best practices and using these UTMs to really piggyback on these links that you're putting out there. And, and that's really what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's this extra information that you attach to your links to give you more, give you more insights when you do check your Google Analytics. Exactly. Now here I've got a, a screenshot up. This is inside of our UTM uh, builder template that we built. So Billy, can you see this one? Yeah, got it. So we're breaking this down here. I'm going to show you what the final URL looks like. So don't get confused by the question marks and all that stuff, but we're basically talking about, this is, this is all that data we're talking about that's passing through. We've got the source, we have medium, we have content, we have campaign, we have the actual term, and all of this can be filled in with whatever you need it to be. And this, this is a, why is that scrolling? Go this way. Um, we let, we, this is just a free template that we have that we that can put up here. But basically you're talking about where's the original destination URL. So it could be um, linchpin.media slash about, right? Right. And that's the original product link, let's say, for, for now. And let's say that tra traffic source is going to be, you know, Facebook. You know what I'm going to do, actually? Yeah. Keep, keep doing that. I'm going to pull up my Google Analytics. Cool. And I'm going to go to the real-time feature. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You where I'm going with this? Yep, I got gotcha. you. So traffic this. source, the medium is, let's say it's, you know, cost per click. So it's going to be, you know, from, from that ad. But this can, be, this, can be, um, this can be a blog post. It can be an Instagram story. It can be literally whatever you want to for the medium. You can have a specific name of the campaign. Uh, Billy, you mentioned earlier, you know, the five, I don't know, five mistakes of data tracking. So you can call, call it five dash mistakes mm -hmm. and then the content and that content could be, um, the actual, um, subject line even, and then term and then the final URL is created. So you're basically filling in these traffic source, medium campaign content and term to help you get very specific. Uh, for example, autoresponders. Um, I think I would probably put it under content, but it would be like AR1. 
you know, AR2 for autoresponder one, autoresponder two, and then the subject line. Um, hey there, you know, like, so you're able to use this information to pass it all the way through so that you can go back retroactively and say, ah, I know where this person came from. I know where they bought. Yeah, let, let's give it a shot. You want to pop in a link and I can show my screen and show what it looks like in Google Analytics? I am. Let's see. But let, let's do this first. Let me, um, let's create the link. So let, use that linchpin, use that top one if you can. No, oh, that one's not working here. Let's go Maybe move it down here. I copy and pasted this one over, so I'm hoping it works. Boop. I'm just going to use some of these term test. There we go. There we go. So it just created so, uh, this. Yeah, why don't you pop that on, before you go to my site, why don't you pop that into like a, maybe like a note doc or something so people can see it. Yeah, here we go. Boop. There we go. Uh, oh, I think you're just sharing your browser. Oh, I, I am. Thank you. Me... Uh, oh, you go. I'm going to go share my whole screen. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, go over and give a, before you type, use that link, go over and give it a refresh on my, uh, my website because it, it actually looks like it timed out or something. You're not showing up anymore on my Google Analytics. And then I'll share my screen and show what it looks like before using a tagged link. Because this is, this is the big mistake that people make and why their data doesn't have as many insights as they need. All right, so here it is, HTTPS, linchpin.media slash about. Right, okay, can I share my screen now? Yep, and I'll stop. And now it's your turn. Okay, do you see my Google Analytics? Yes, we do. Okay, so I obviously don't have the most traffic site in the world, but I do have one visitor, and I think I know who it is. That'd be this guy. <laughs> That's this guy, right? So here he is. So you go to your real-time report up here. A lot of people don't know that this exists. You go to overview, you can see you have this one visitor. You can see the page that he's on. You can see, this is the important one, the traffic source here. So this is where the UTMs come into play under traffic source. You can see that this matches what AJ had in his spreadsheet, medium source. Uh, you can even look at location. Let's see if this, is that right? Did we find you? You're right, in Miami. Gotcha. Outside of Miami. Right. So now go ahead and use that link. So the link right. that you guys just saw that he created, he's gonna pop in here and it's gonna take him to the same page Oh, but one thing I want to point out, though, is that if you look here, this data is not very useful. So this is what's going into my Google Analytics right now, that the medium is none, the source is direct. It essentially has no information, no information whatsoever. And that's because he went directly to, he typed in linchpin.media slash about instead of following a, a tracked link. Now, if people do go directly to your site. There's really not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, but if they... But a lot of times people will click an untracked link and if Google doesn't know where that link is coming from, their default bucket is this annoying direct bucket right here, which you, you probably see a lot of your traffic coming from, especially if you're not tracking your links. So go ahead and go to my URL using the tracked one and we'll see what happens here. Yeah, those of you who are frustrated with that bucket being really full and you're like, everybody's in there, this is why, this is the fix, you're welcome. Here yeah. we go. Now I'm, I'm typing is, that in. And I'm just now pushing enter. Now, okay. Now, what, what do you, well, let's show, since you're showing your screen, let's see what you see. Okay, can you still see it? Yep. There we go. Boom, real time. Look at that, how that worked. Yep, so, medium CPC, source Google. Yep, this is awesome. So it's showing me, but now it's attributing to where I came from. So I, quote unquote, clicked on an ad on Google and that's where it's attributing that to me. So all that data is coming through there. So you wanna click on the, if you click on the medium. You, and there the keyword go. is there too. Keyword was test, right? All of that came through. All of that's passing through. And there should be um, uh, the content. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, this is the content that you're looking at. I don't know if it shows the content field in this. You might have to go into the, the, the more in-depth report for that one. That's right. Yeah, you're just looking at the, you're in real time. That's true. So, but it, I'm on that page. It, all that stuff passed through. And let me switch to my screen now. Yeah. And I'll show them, I'll show you this. So this is what I'm seeing. 
So notice in my browser here, I'm at the same website. This is what you saw before. But now it's got all of this parsing all the way through with test, which we saw on his screen, uh, the five mistakes, um, and the CPC, and, and there's the fact that it came from Google. So that right now, we just real time within just a few minutes created a UTM tag or UTM link and pushed it right to him and he had it immediately. This is how quickly it works and you can test it. Yeah, and, and so this is gonna go into the report. So this is the real time view of Google Analytics. But when you go back and you look at the historic data, it's gonna look the same way. You're gonna see the same fields. You would find that under, uh, under acquisition, source, medium, content, and all that. So imagine if this isn't just one visitor, but thousands or hundreds of thousands of visitors. Or if you're talking about conversions, if you're talking about, say, 100 sales uh, without the tagged link and with the tagged link, without it, all those sales are in that direct bucket. And then with the tagged link, you have all this extra data about where, where the sales are coming from. I mean, just imagine the additional insights you're going to get from that. It's amazing. And I know we're, we're starting to run out of time, but I want to show where, to take it even further, this is what's possible when you do this. So I'm, I'm resharing my screen here in one of our dashboards we built. And this is lifetime value by source. So this is in the last six months because our client was using the, 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 the UTMs correctly. They've got Google Analytics, I think here, Shopify, and, and a few other things. We're able to tell them, hey, Look, this is affiliate, Google, Facebook. These are all the different channels. Instead of them all going direct, right? So direct is, is pretty, this is about normal, right? This it should be around this size. But some people have this being their biggest one, and that means they're losing all their tracking. But here we're seeing that affiliates are actually worth, in the first 30 days, $61 compared to Yahoo, which is $25. So the reason we don't like to do averages is because averages kind of suck. They're not going to tell you the granularity you need. So you're not going to go spend, you know, if you get, if $34 on Google compared to $25, you're not going to, you're not going to make money spending, uh, spending 35 bucks on Yahoo. You want to kind of cut that down, right? Yeah, exactly. And what this all comes down to. So of course the important thing here is the insights, the actions that you take based on this data. Exactly. And, and there are, and there are a lot of different things things you could do, but uh, to just sum it up, you know, it really comes down to doing more of what works. And to know what works, you really have to be tracking your data. So if you look at that, yeah, spend more money, spend more time, put more resources towards the things that are working for you. Because as marketers, we take our best guess at that, we do our market research, we follow best practices, but at the end of the day, it is just a guess, it's all just an experiment, and we really need to use this to, to guide our efforts. Well said, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for, you know, good enough data that really, really will, will, will answer that question as, as best as it can. And you, I mean, you said it, it's about tracking that, do these small experiments, test something, don't spend too much money. Don't let it just keep going, but, but look at the data, take the time at the end of the day or the end of the week to say, all right, I'm going to turn everything off and just look at the data yourself, spend some time with it. It gets easier and easier the more you do it. So this has been awesome, Billy. Thank you so much. Any final last words at, about it? Uh, no, I would just say put it into going, piggybacking on your last point there, put it into a routine. That's something that we have our clients do with the, the Facebook ads to really make sure that it, it's systemized. Because if you have to rely on yourself to say, you know, if you're shopping for groceries and you're like, oh man, I should probably check my data when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're doing it wrong. So well, uh, Ramit Sethi has this great saying that if it's not in the calendar, it doesn't exist. So put it in the calendar. That's ours as well. Well said. Great final words, Billy. We'll do another one next time. Thank you so much for your insight. Totally appreciate it. Have a great day, man. Have a good one. Take care.